Amen. Well, the, uh, the first thing I did this morning when I got up, I just got on my knees and cried out to the Lord. Amen. And said, Lord, please, if, if Dwight Goodson is on a schedule to sing, please just give him a sore throat. Lord, just, just do whatever you got to do to stop it, Lord, please. And, and uh, praise God he didn't sing. It had been... It had been a struggle to preach now because, you know, he just because he looks like Kenny Rogers, he thinks he can sing. Amen. He's under this delusion out there. But uh, Dwight and I are no longer neighbors. And uh, um, <clears throat> since uh, I've moved away there, they say the neighborhood's really gone down. I mean, it's uh, I mean, he used to try to t tone it down a little bit, but uh, 50 years of marriage, what a testimony of the power of God, amen? Um, I love these two folks out there. They have prayed in this church. As soon as I walk in the door, they don't want to know about me. You guys want to know about my children and family. And uh, that's a blessing to me. That means more to me than anything else in the world that this church um, has prayed for, um, you know, not, not only the work that God has called me to do, but um, particularly for my family and my son, uh, who was in some very serious stuff over there in Iraq. And, uh, and it's no secret he came back and I thought I'd lost him to... Uh, to alcohol and and just he went in a his very best friend got uh, blown up six months into it Corey Costers uh, who by the way they built a statue for him if you go to the woodlands uh, and there's a little area there by the HEB it's long uh, grassy area um, park there and they got a they got a statue it's called the way home and it's Corey um, pointing it looks just like him and um, and when Corey got blown up, my son, he, he said, he told, I was sitting in the hospital with him, and the psychiatrist said, John, tell me what happened. And he said, when my friend got blown up and killed, I went into a very dark place. And the enemy tried to kill him, and, um, and this church prayed for him. Amen? And he's doing wonderful now. Amen? He's working at a, a chemical company, and I mean a chemical plant, and making too much money. I told him, I said, now, son, some people I ask them to pray about supporting me, it's mandatory for you because I know how much you're making. Amen. And so we'll have direct debit right into the account there. So he said, okay, dad. All right. Yeah, I know. Okay, dad. Yeah. But um, just appreciate the prayers. I um, sat with a young man this morning um, in downtown Houston at a place called Peden Street, which is a, um, a drug rehab. Is anybody familiar with Peden Street in downtown? It's a, a drug rehab. You know a little bit about it. And um, I sat with a young, uh, young uh, white male, uh, 25 years old, by the name of Craig. His arms were completely covered with scabs from shooting heroin. And um, I pulled him out. He was with, with us in in the service and I pulled him out and I, because I noticed him while I was preaching, he teared up and I shared my story about being a heroin addict and uh, eight felonies and uh, he wanted to talk and, uh, and so what a joy it is. I love talking to drug addicts. I just, this, I, this, I feel like that's what I was made for, amen? And uh, God has taken my mess and turned it into the message, amen? And so that's what he does with all of us. He uh, always tell, I told him this morning, I said, Craig, let me tell you something. You didn't get arrested, you got rescued. He said, you know what, chap? I've never thought about that. I said, oh yeah, you should be dead. And um, you know, the devil doesn't have any new tricks, just new sticks. And what he was using was that uh, heroin and that new drug that just hit the streets. He, this, this boy's from Pennsylvania. He moved down here trying to get away from his drug addiction. And he said, chap, that stuff, carfentanil, that's on the streets now, one grain of it 
you may have seen it in the newspaper, one grain, it's just now hit the streets of Houston, one, it's elephant, it's, it's, it's made for elephants to sedate them, it's an opiate, but one grain of it will kill a human being. And um, he said, chap, I got 14 friends that are dead up in Pennsylvania behind that. And he said, it's hit the streets. He said, he said, I'm done. I just, I need, he said, I have been in every drug program up north. He said, my mom has never given up. His dad was a straight state trooper. They have put me in, in the most expensive drug programs. And these drug programs, let me just tell you something, they're a joke. I mean, they're pitiful. They are. They're just pitiful. They don't have any answer. They have no God. They have no word. They have a bunch of psychobabble. And if I sound angry, I am angry. It's a racket. And uh, can I get up some water? Can somebody bring me a bottle of water? And so I was able to share Christ with him and say, let me tell you, Craig, it's either going to be Christ or chaos. Amen. That goes for all of us. We're all in recovery. Amen. We're, you know, we're all in recovery. You say, Brother Downs, when did recovery start? In the Garden of Eden. Amen. That's when it started. And so God has allowed me to, uh, to keep keeping on and, and, and sharing. Uh, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It's the power of God and the salvation to Everyone that believes. Amen? Amen. He can save from the guttermost to the uttermost. Oh my, here comes my thorn in the flesh, Mark. <laughs> Everybody needs a thorn in the flesh. Is it just me or are you getting uglier every time I see you? Brother? <laughs> you don't know what, what would you put in here? Hey, <laughs> Woo! his life verse is that Jesus turned the water into wine. That's Mark's life verse. He loves that verse. Thank you, Mark. I um, have, since I've seen you last, I, I got to go to Arizona and uh, to the Apache Reservation in San Carlos, uh, two million acres, and uh, I went into the tribal jails out there. What a joy, what a privilege uh, to go back. You know, they don't, they typically don't have much uh, use for white people. Wonder why. Okay. And I have less hair than I had when I went. No, I'm just teasing. But uh, man, I'm going to tell you, we went into the tribal jail there. And of course, here comes this white dude, you know, and Scott, my friend, he's been a missionary out there for years, but they were all sleeping. And so um, I said, listen, I'm going back in the into the dormitory. And Scott said, I don't think we're supposed to go back there. I said, well, pray for me. Amen. And uh, I so sanctified disobedience. I went back in there and I said, guys, Chaplain Downs here from Houston. God sent me here. Got eight felonies and uh, was addicted to heroin, some other drugs. I want to tell you, God always makes a way out. I want to tell you about it. Amen. And man, they all came. See, Jesus loves the little children, all the children. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious. That's one of the greatest theological statements that's ever been sung. Amen? About the character and nature of God. And we had a great move of God <clears throat> there, at, uh, not because of, of me, but because of the word of God. So God's, and I'll talk more about the ministry uh, tonight. Um, I want us to turn in our Bibles this morning to, um, let's start in the book of Ezra, uh, just some selected verses, the book of Ezra. Uh, if you go to Psalms and back up, uh, Linda, help Dwight find that. We, I don't want him to be, and if he can't find it, just look up here like you found it, Dwight. So, you, okay. The book of Ezra. Man, I like this pulpit. This is big. Huh? Yeah, it's big. You know, it used to be that uh, in, in the back in the days that uh, the pulpits were, were humongous. And the reason for that was the preachers wanted everybody to understand we're small. We're nothing. And um, interesting, I just read that the other day. Now, I, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I've, um, 
I've uh, been reading and studying the Bible for a long time, and and uh, God gave me a brand new one of those verses that you're like, wow, Lord, amen? That's why it's so important that you're in the word of God every day with a pen in your hand saying, Lord, open my eyes, may behold wondrous things out of your law and ask God to give you something, amen? God gave me this verse. Let's stand together uh, for the reading of his word. Uh, Ezra chapter nine, Ezra chapter nine, And we're going to be, I want you to look at verse 8. This is a great verse to underline. Great verse to look at. And now, for a little space, just a little window, grace has been showed from the Lord. Amen? Amen. For a little space, grace has been shown from the Lord our God to leave us a remnant to escape and to give us a nail in his holy place that our God may lighten our eyes and give us a little reviving in our bondage. Isn't that a great verse? I mean, that'll make any Baptist shout. Amen. Amen. That's a great verse. You know the context. God's people had gone into captivity. Not unlike America who is now in captivity right now. This nation is in total bondage. There are more drug addicts. If you could see what I see on a daily basis in the second largest jail in downtown Houston. It's the second largest jail in the United States of America right now. And we, they can't build sex offender cell blocks fast enough because of what the internet has done. And this nation is in solid bondage to addiction, to pornography, to churches that are not preaching the gospel. And God, to these people who went into bondage because of idolatry, he says, let me tell you, the prophet says, a little window's been given. Amen? Amen. Window of grace that we might, God may lighten our eyes and give us a little, here's the word, reviving in our bondage. Turn to the book of Acts. Chapter number three, book of Acts in the New Testament. Chapter number three. Thank you there, brother. Man, I'm going to tell you, you're really getting right with God today. Yeah. Thank you, sir. God is on the move here in the book of Acts. Here's another great verse. Acts three, Peter's preaching, verse 19 Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Times of refreshing. It's revival. It's renewal. And the Lord shall send Jesus Christ which before was preached unto you. Let's pray. Lord, we come today and we ask, Father God, that you would be with our nation. You said, first of all, prayers for our leaders. I pray, God, you would infuse our leaders with the fear of God today. I pray you would inject those that be in authority with an absolute fear and reverence for you, God. I pray you would bring us to our knees, Lord. I pray, God, that you would give wisdom to those that be in authority. And Lord, we know in this room, God, that a lot of us are doing well this morning, but, and a lot of us are very, very blessed. But Lord, I'm, I pray for those in this room this morning that are just, they're hurting God. It's, it's maybe a child that's, 
that's in, in bondage to drugs or a grandchild who has lost his or her way. Lord, there's folks in here, even this week, that are scheduled for surgery, for cancer. I pray you'd guide the doctors, guide everything that's done. I pray and lift up those that are carrying hurts in this room. They're hurting so deep they can't even right now speak it or share it. Lord, be that balm of Gilead to them today. We just ask, God, that you would be with Pastor and the team. We pray for a time of refreshment there, a time of renewal, a time of revival in Ireland. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. The heart of God is always for revival. He's always wanting his people to enter into what John 10, 10 says. He said, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Now, I, I tend to be a, a pretty negative. Anybody else in here kind of negative? I, I'm, you know, yeah, I know Mark is. The old brother Thorne's always negative. I mean, I, he and I are a lot alike on that. I've said for years where America's beyond revival. We've crossed too many lines. When you murder as many babies as we've murdered, well, the Lord has given me and he's infused me in this just in the past two weeks that uh, as I've been studying revival and looking at revivals, primarily the revivals in the Bible, that's, there's some great things that, that happen, Amen. In the word of God, where God supernaturally stepped in. And they all have one thing in common. Number one, typically it was when the nation of Israel was in the deepest, darkest, idolatrous, depraved times. Isn't that amazing? I'm going to tell you, that makes us a candidate. Amen? Okay. America has never been more depraved. I had a guy in my office this past week. He shared with me, and I, I, there is no way I could even begin to tell you. He claimed to be a Christian. And he shared with me something that was so vile that he was doing that I literally almost threw up in my office. And I said, bro, listen, you need to go back to your tank. Uh, We're done. Get a Bible on the way out. Make sure you get a Bible, and I'll pull you back out another time. We'll talk more. I I couldn't even handle it. It was the depths of depravity, the darkness, the stuff on the Internet that's being said about the Word of God. I'm not reading it. I just know it's out there. About we are now, we, you are now... The one who's a criminal because of what you believe in this, in this nation. You're the one that has hate. You're the one that needs to be locked up. We are now calling good evil and evil good. And if you read chapter 5 of the book of Isaiah, we see that's what happens when a nation gets away from God. We need revival. Revival is restoration. It's that time of refreshment. And we see that it typically happens. It always starts with God. Revival always starts with God. Whether it's personal revival, and that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about preparing for personal revival. Because we'll never see... A revival in this nation unless we see it in this building and in our we need to draw a circle around ourselves and say God I need to be set on fire for you I need revival in my own life but revival always starts with the move of God when God begins to make you restless 
when God begins to show a nation um, and reveal some things and he steps in. Uh, revival can no more, you can't, isn't it funny to drive by churches and you see on the billboard, revival, revival, uh, the week of, you know, whatever. No, you can't make revival happen. No more than you can make springtime happen. Amen? That's a God thing. And we need springtime again in our lives. We need springtime again spiritually, individually, corporately, and we need revival nationally. And I believe God, you know, that's his heart. That's his heart. Think about this. One of the greatest verses on the character and nature of God really is, is, is 2 Peter ch chapter 3. And see, I've always focused on, you know, <clears throat> and the earth shall pass away with the fervent heat. Yeah, get him, God. Amen. He's going to burn everything up. It's time, O oh Lord. I mean, but all of us, all of us as children of God, we're grieved. And we do want the justice of God. Amen. We, we're, 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 I'm excited that every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess. But God says in that same chapter, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, but is long suffering. He's very patient. Not, here's a, here it is. Not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. Amen. The reason the Lord hadn't stepped in is he loves this world. That hasn't changed. And I believe he's wanting to do before he comes back, I believe he's wanting to do something very, very special that can only be explained by the fact that God showed up. When revival is always accompanied by some things, it's always accompanied, uh, again, like I said, by when, a, when, a, when a, an individual, you've slipped away from God, you, you re, God comes in, a nation. You know, some of the greatest revivals in the history of the world um, were in England. England had lapsed into godlessness. 1700s, God raised up, he raised up some George Whitfields, amen? John Wesley. There was a great outpouring of God's spirit in many, 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 many hundreds of, think about John Wesley rode over 200,000 miles on his horse preaching the gospel right here. The revivals of Christianity typically happen when the funeral of faith is nigh. Revival's always accompanied by repentance. Amen? It's always accompanied by God's people being broken. God's people. Weeping. And I feel like the church, we've all gotten so desensitized and we've gotten used to the dark. And God wants to sensitize us to what's going on because when we watch the news, we all hurt, okay? We all grieve. But think about the heart of God who's seeing it all. Repentance always is a part of not only personal revival, but national revival. Revival always, always is accompanied by a return of God's people to his word. Always. Don't believe me, read about it in the scriptures. Read about the great revival <laughs> under some of the kings. King Josiah. What a story. King Hezekiah. They always, God's people always came back to the word of God. Amen? 
And if you're going to have personal revival, it's going to be a return to the word of God. It always results in the salvation of souls. And how few churches now are seeing anybody saved. But God can send a revival where the altars can be filled. People in these neighborhoods, it's nothing we can do. It's not about a program. It's not about, okay, what we're going to do, we're going to come out with a really cool fly, a flyer. I had a pastor tell me the other day, this is what he told me, Mark. He said, yeah, Brother Downs. That's how he talked, amen. Yeah, Brother Downs, let me tell you, man. My church, uh, it's all about the cool factor. That's what we told him. I said, man, awesome. Awesome. I said, where's that verse? He said, I don't know about no verse, man. It's just, we're just cool. He said, I got me a smoke machine on the, up there. We have a smoke machine. And, and uh, let me tell you something. We're not, you know, it's not about being conformed to the world that's going to win the world. It's not about criticizing the world that's going to, that's going to, and I do a lot of that. I think I'm doing it right now. It's not, it's, it's, it's not about criticizing. It's about combustion. When God's people get set on fire by the Holy Spirit of God, we're going to see our neighbors taking a look. We're going to see God do something that can only be explained. And it starts with us. God doesn't have another plan. This is plan A, and he doesn't have another plan. Really, a lot of what we're going through right now is really about the church. Revival always starts by a person, by people, God using somebody, somewhere. Y'all know I was saved under the ministry of Lester Roloff. Brother Roloff was just a simple country boy who picked cotton all his life. And he told God, he went off to Baylor University in 1937, and he said, Lord, there ain't much of me, but what you got is yours. Amen? And he meant that. He took his, in true story, he took, he, he took a dairy cow off to Baylor University in a little old trailer, milked his way through, uh, through Baylor University and went off to seminary. And then got a burden for knuckleheads like me and started homes. And that's where I was court ordered in 1978 on my eighth felony. And that man, I'm going to tell you, he was a broken man. Broken, broken, broken by God over the young girls in the 70s that were having babies and the drug addicts. And God had all of him, and that's what God wants. My, my neighbors that lived down the street, Dwight, that lived right across the street from me, they told me their daughter got married in uh, the West Indies. They had a big wedding in St. Kitts, which is the West Indies. And um, they came back from the wedding, and I was talking to them, and they said, they said, John, um, you mentioned, because I'd, I'd, I'd given them my testimony, amen. I love giving my testimony, amen. I love just filling everybody full of gospel bullets. And so, man, they had heard about Brother Walt. Well, they, they got to St. Kitts, and uh, the taxi driver picked them up, and uh, he said, where, where are y'all from, you know? And, uh, and he said, we're from Texas. And this dude pulled the cab over, and he said, Texas? He said, have you ever heard of a guy named Brother Roloff? Now these people, they, the, my neighbors, they didn't, they'd never heard of Brother Roloff until I told them. And they said, no, we don't, we've heard. The only way we know about him is that our neighbor uh, was like a son to him. He was like, wow. He said, here's Brother Roloff, just simple old country preacher. He said that Brother Roloff came here in the 60s set up a tent and he preached and he said the whole island got saved. He said, I'm saved. He said it swept across the island and the whole island came to Christ. Brother Wolf didn't do that. 
God did it. Amen. Okay. And God can do it again. I believe that. I believe there can be another move in this nation. But it's going to take some brokenness. It's going to take a return to the word of God. It's going to take us. One of, one of my favorite verses, got a lot of them, is 2 Chronicles 16, verse number 9. That's a great verse. The Bible says the eyes of the Lord are going back and forth right now across the world. And it says his eyes are looking for a man or a woman whose heart is turned fully toward him, perfect toward him, so that he can show himself strong on that individual's life. God is looking for some men and women. He's looking for some young people that like an Amy Carmichael who left England, walked away from a very wealthy family and started an orphanage in India. What a story. One of my heroes of the faith, Amy Carmichael. Her family said, you're a fool. We'll let God decide that. Amen. Amen. And she went and got these little prostitute girls. They were using these girls. I'm talking about 10, 11, 12 for this horrible, horrible stuff in India. And she built a huge place for them. Amen. One person. God is looking for somebody in this room that will draw a circle around yourself and say, Father, start a revival and start it within this circle. That's what he's looking for. That's what I want and I pray that God will do something in somebody's heart in this room. It was D.L. Moody. I just was in Chicago and, uh, and I wanted to go to Moody Church because a lot of really cool things happened at Moody Church back in the 18, late 1800s, a young man named Dwight Lyman Moody. They called him, you know what they called him in Chicago? Crazy Moody. That's what they called Because D.L. Moody, he heard somebody say, as a young Christian, it's yet to be seen what God can do with one man fully yielded to the will of God. And he said, God, I want to be that man. He personally won over one million souls to Jesus Christ. God wants to do it again. God wants to use us. Amen? He wants to use us. If I was going to pick out one verse this morning, when we talk about preparing for personal revival... I don't know about y'all, I want to finish my life in re personal revival. Amen? Amen? I want to be as close to God and experiencing the fullness of the Holy Spirit and His Word being alive. That's what, that's, I, I desire that so much. That the Lord would do a new thing and do a new work. But I was going to pick one verse out on revival. Now, if I was going to pick one chapter out of the Bible, the greatest chapter on personal revival, then I would say that would be Psalm 51. That would be Psalm 51. I would memorize that psalm. Now, it was written by a guy who had gotten away from the Lord. We know the story. King David had gotten himself. He had set up some idols. Let me tell you something. We think of idols as statues. The Bible says in Ezekiel 14, we set up idols in our heart. Nobody else knows about them. Oh no, nobody can see them. Only we know about them and God. And David had set up some idols in his heart of lust and other things. And y'all know the story. He took another man's wife. Baby died murdered another man and that Psalm 51 is him coming home and him experiencing personal revival. Now let me tell you something. That's for all of us. Amen? 
We all need that Psalm 51 experience. We need that. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Renew, that's what I, renew a right spirit. Lord, I've just been critical. I've been bitter. I've been gossiping. I've been, Lord, I need renewal. I'm a miserable, miserable example of your grace. Renew me, O oh God. Do a new work. Don't settle for, settle for Christianity. I mean, does it, the, the, the people you work with, and I'm not talking about being kooky. It's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about just being so controlled by the Lord that your speech, everything is bringing glory to God. So that people sense you think that's possible with this? Do you think people can sense the Holy Spirit without you even speaking? I do. When you have a clean heart, Paul said, herein do I exercise myself, Acts 24, 16. Herein, he said, here do I exercise myself to have a conscience void of offense toward God and toward man. Nothing between my soul and the Savior. That's a great song, isn't it? Love that song. Nothing between my soul and the Savior. But the greatest verse, we all know this verse on revival. We're going to close with it. In 2 Chronicles, what? 7.14. Let's go there again and hit the reset button on this verse. 2 Chronicles 7, verse 14. And we're going to be done... We're going to look at this verse. And we're going to ask God to do a work in our lives. It's time oh, the, for the old God to work. Amen. That's what the psalmist Lord, I want to be, I'm ready, God. If your eyes are looking for somebody, I want to be that young girl who sells out early. I want to be that person I want to, I've been in church all my life, Lord. You may have been in church since nine months before you were born. And debtor and King Tut in here this morning. There's just no light. It's possible. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I just saw a deacon saved not long ago. Been in church all his life. I mean, this man, almost 80 years old, been in church all of his life, Mark. Lost as a ball in high weeds. Didn't know the Lord from a lizard. Oh, he was good Baptist. He was in church, man. But there'd never been a work in his heart and life. You ought to see him now. It looks like he's plugged into a 220 volt socket. Amen. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Coming to the jail. I said, bro, you're kind of old. You're going to come. He said, I'm coming. I said, okay. Okay. Remember Brother Turpin? Same thing. Oh, Brother Turpin. I remember the major... Uh, called me in the office when Brother Turpin was coming in. Almost 90 years old. He said, uh, he said, Chapman Downs, uh, love you, appreciate you, but the gentleman I was watching y'all come through the metal detector, how old is that guy? He said, he's almost 90. Isn't that something major? He said, yes, yeah, something all right. It's, it's too dangerous for him to be in here. Well, I could feel myself getting red, Okay. I said, Major, I tell you what, because he's an old Marine, the Major. And I said, I tell you what, Major, that man was in France during the Mor Normandy invasion, okay? Working on airplanes. I said, you go tell him, because I'm not going to do it. <laughs> he said, all right, we'll let him stay. Amen. <laughs> he's home now, amen? amen? Glory to God. Second Chronicles 7.14. Once again, God's formula for refreshment, God's formula for personal revival. Mark it down, memorize this verse. This is the formula. God says, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, 
seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. Now that's the word of God. That's not my opinion. That's not something some, um, you know, psychiatrist put together. That's the word of God. And if we're going to have personal revival, it start, he says, look at it. Now, let's break it down with some of the, my black brothers in jail. They always say, come on, brother Downs, break it down. Over there. Break it down. Over there. That's what they always say. Break this verse down. It starts by saying, that's a big if, if, if my people. He didn't say if the world. He didn't say if Holly. He said, if my people. My people. We are God's people. Amen? I hope that you're God's child. And let me say, you may be here this morning and you, you may be under some kind of delusion. That's why the Bible says in 2 Corinthians, examine yourselves and see if you be in the faith. Is there any fruit? Is there any spiritual stuff going on in your life? Are you under conviction about things? Are you being chastised? If not, the Bible says you need to check up. Amen? If my people, and if you're in here and you're not sure, you say, Brother Downs, I, I, I'm going to tell you, there has been a nagging doubt in my life for years. Well, that's fine. Get it settled. Amen? You may indeed be saved, but you need to drive a stake in the ground and get that settled. Amen? Obviously, Christians get away from God. Obviously, Christians... But I'm talking about if you look back over your life and there's always been this nagging doubt of whether or not you've truly been born again, because there are going to be some earmarks of that that are un, undeniable then drive a stake in the ground. And on this July 16th, say, Lord, I'm hitting the reset button and I am going to rest in your redemption, in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. I am now, Lord Jesus, looking to you, looking to your death. I'm looking to your resurrection and I'm hitting the reset button. And Lord, I want to get this thing settled once and for all. The Bible says these things are written that we may know that we have eternal life. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. That was Brother Turpin's verse. Heard him say it thousands. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That's pretty simple, Brother Downs. It is. So don't let the devil hoodwink you. If you're in here and you don't know where you'd go today if you died, then don't leave here without doing that. Nail it down. So that the devil cannot torment you with doubt and with fear do what the word of God says. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Nail it down. Well, what are people going to think? Who cares what they think? Amen. You think I care about what you think? I don't care what you think about me. See, the, the Bible says the fear of man is a, is a snare. Proverbs. And so, say, God, I want to nail that down. I want revival in my life. I want this abundant life and I want to nail this down. If my people called by my name, you know, that's what the church is. The, the word ecclesia, we're the called out ones. Amen? Amen. God has called us out of this world to salvation. He did. He said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men. It's God's will for everybody in this room to be saved. Without a doubt. No doubt about it. He'd have all men to be saved and come to not. Number two, he's called us to be set apart. There's some things in our lives that need to go. He's called us out. He's called us to be separate, distinct. He's called us to, 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 to be separate. And he's called us all to serve. Somebody needs your witness. Okay? You can reach somebody that I can't reach. 
You know, God has just called us to shine. Amen? That's what he's called. Look, when you look at 2 Corinthians 4, he said that that's our ministry. Our ministry is to shine for the Lord. I was preaching at Ellis Maximum Security Prison just north of Huntsville, and one of the inmates said, Brother Downs, I know I was sitting there watching you, man, and I know your ministry is called Lighthouse. He said, I saw that light coming off your head, and now I know why you named it Lighthouse. I said, well, that's not why, brother, but I'll take that. Amen. We, we need to shine. And when we are filled with God's glory, it'll, they'll see it in our eyes. Amen. There'll be a sparkle. There'll be a sparkle there. There'll be joy even in the midst of trials. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. God's called us to shine. He's called us all to be lighthouses. Amen. Let your light so shine before men that they may not hear, but see your work. Let me tell you something. You're the only Bible some people will ever read. Okay? This is, this is very, very, very important. He said, if my people call by my name, will humble themselves, because we know God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Amen? If we will hit the deck, amen? If we will renew our commitment to the Lordship of Christ, okay? It's possible to be a Christian and not be submitted to his Lordship. That's when the Lord has absolute and final authority in our lives. Totally surrender to him. I encourage you. As you seek God and seek personal revival, preparation for personal revival, then some resubmit yourself to the Lordship of Christ. That means some things are going to have to go. It says, humble yourselves, pray. You know, prayer is hard work, isn't it? Mark, it is, isn't it? Prayer is hard work. Prayer is not easy. The devil will throw everything in the world to keep you from praying. I mean everything. You have to make up your mind. However that looks for you, we're all different. It's prayer lists, those work, prayer time, set apart for God. You know, in the morning, even, even my old dog, Ben, I get up typically at 4.30. What do you think first thing I do? 4.30. I make coffee, amen? And so I make a pot of coffee. But, and then I get my old Bible, and even Ben, you know, he stays in at night, and he knows, he, I, I, he said, I ain't gonna, I'm not gonna mess with that booger right now. He's wanting to be, but old Ben, Dwight knows Ben, he's a good dog, isn't he? You think he's saved, Dwight? <laughs> Dwight doesn't like dogs, he, he needs to get right. But old Ben, he'll sit over there and just watch me, and he'll see me, you know, reading the word and talking to the Lord. As soon as I close my Bible, here he comes. I'm not going to be distracted. Amen? Amen? God is number one. He's first. I set aside that time to pray. But I pray through the day. God wants us, if my people call by my name, shall humble themselves. See, prayer is pride. I mean, prayerlessness is pride. When you don't pray... You're telling God, I don't need you. I got this on my own. My people call by my name, humble themselves and pray. And look what it says, and seek his face. You know what that means to me? Just be best friends with God. Just be best friends with God. Amen? Huh? Just hang out with the Lord. I mean, talk to him throughout the day. Lord, you, don't, you don't have to pray these long prayers. Our Father, we... Cut. No, no, just, hey, Lord, uh, we praise you, Lord. Look at that cloud over there. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. Look at that silver lining over there. Lord, look at that bird right there. Thank you, Lord. You feed the birds. Feed, feed the hungry today. Amen? I mean, just short prayers. Not just ritualistic, I praise thee, I pray. No, but... Prayers like, Lord, love you. 
Lord, I, I reverence you. I admire you, God. I humble myself before you, Lord. Prayer. Seek his face. Become best friends. David said, whom I vow in heaven, but thee and there's none on earth that I desire. David became best friends with God. You know, one of the saddest verses in the Bible is in Genesis chapter 3. When God's the first question God ever asked. Where are you? Where art thou? We used to walk in the cool of the day. We were hanging out. Where are you, Adam? Walk with God in the cool of the day. Amen? Fellowship with him. Seek his face. Seek his face. Draw nigh to God. And the Bible says he will draw nigh to you. Isn't that a great promise? I want as much of God as I can get. Amen? Amen. Tell the Lord that. Say, Lord, I want as much of you as I can get. I want to see you. When you are seeking his face and you're alive to God, you know what? Every bush becomes a burning bush. You know, I know Dwight, he fishes a lot, but I'm going to tell you, Dwight, he'll see the Lord out there and, and, uh, and give God the glory. Amen? Enjoy God's creation. One of the worst fishermen I've ever been around, I tell you. I taught him a few things, though. He's doing okay. Come home to God. He says right here, if they'll seek my face and what? Turn. That's repentance. Repentance is not being sorry. Repentance is being sorry enough to quit whatever it is separating you from God. That's repentance. 1 Thessalonians 1.9 is the Bible definition. Paul is praising the church at Thessalonica and he says, you, <laughs> you turn from idols to God to serve. It's 1.9. It's a great verse. Come home. Come home. Come home today and say, Lord, I want to start afresh. I want the times of refreshing in my life, God. I want to see my neighborhood, I want to see my office impacted by my life in some little things, God. And I need your power. I never drive to jail without saying, God, I, as many times as I preach, I'm always begging God to somehow or another use me. Amen? He wants to use us. He wants to, and then the promise in this verse is, I'm going to hear you because God's, he's, he's watching. He's looking for that one. He's got his radar on. Who's going to turn that doo doo doo. He's looking as soon as he sees you hungry for him. He's going to hear. He's going to forgive. And he's going to heal whatever's broken in your life. Maybe there's just one person in this room this message was for this morning. If so, it's all been worth it. If you can experience personal revival. Carlos Barrera, I met him on the seventh floor at 701 San Jacinto. Carlos <clears throat> Barrera was in the Zeta cartel, okay? One of the most violent cartels in the world. When they arrested him, he had 500 AK-47s. I said, bro, what were you doing with five? He said, I don't want to talk about that, chap. Come on, man. This man was responsible for multiple murders, including the death of a federal agent. And most of y'all remember that in the news. Carlos began coming to my service every week faithfully. He didn't come because he was coming to go to church, trust me. Okay? Somebody had turned state's evidence against him. 
somebody had what they call snitched on him. So he was coming to church hoping that that person would show up too from another cell. And it wasn't going to be a pretty sight. But you see, the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. And Carlos Barrera, his repentance became as notorious as his sin was. And he cried every single service after he gave his life to Christ. He took over the cell block, seventh floor, A pod, A1. And 7A1 had a bona fide revival in it. Because one man, I remember they gave him life in prison and they brought him back to the floor. And uh, they, when you get life in prison or you get the death sentence, they surround you. They shackle you up and they have, I call them the Ninja Turtles. Well, the Ninja Turtles, boy, they had, they had all the gear on and, and uh, they got everything, man. And they, they had him all chained up. Well, he was in my class. I had him in a leadership class. And I was training cell block pastors to be the pastor of the tank. Amen. And uh, I told Sergeant, Sergeant V, he tough sergeant. He keeps his gas always on. He gasses everybody. Before he even says stop, he just gasses all. And, and uh, Sergeant, he's a trip, man. I said, bro, don't be gassing if I'm in the cell block, okay? I want out before you start gassing everybody. So I said, Sergeant V, um, what, they, they move into, once you get life in prison, they put you in single cell, they take you out of your cell block. And I said, Sergeant, he's supposed to be in church tonight. He said, I can't come to church, chap. He's... I, this protocol, I got to lock him down and add SEG, administrative SEG. Grade. And I said, can he come to church one more time? He said, nope. I said, come on, Sarge, lighten up a little bit. Leave him in chains and bring him. He said, okay, chap, I'll bring him down there. But the guards are going to have to sit. I said, I'm, I, man, I love to have guards in there. I get them too, amen? <laughs> I'll fill them all full of gospel bullets. So... Here they come, and old Carlos is going to be his last service with me. And uh, had him all changed. And I said, tonight we have a special speaker, Carlos Pereira. And I'm going to tell you, he got up all chained up in, uh, <laughs> and preached and brought the message. Didn't blink an eye. They had interviewed him. I was sitting in Sergeant V's office because when you get life in prison, the, the psychiatrists, they all come and they, want to, they say, do you need some medication? And, uh, that's I, and I could hear him. I, uh, Mr. Burr, do you need some meds? And he said, no, I'm, I'm good. So will of God was done today. Amen. And man, she was like, okay, he's really gone now. Okay. <laughs> All right, Mr. Barrera, uh, no, just, let's just be in reality right now. He said, no, ma'am, let me tell you something. I have more peace in my life right now than I've ever had. He told me, he said, Chaplain, Dad, you're a full-time chaplain, so am I. He's got life, amen? Boy, and he preached that night. Several men gave their life to Christ. One man fully surrendered. Let's be that man. Let's be that woman. Let's be that teenager. Let's hit the reset button and say, Father, I want to finish strong. I want to impact somebody's life for Christ. Let's bow together in prayer. You're here today. Say, Brother Downs, just pray for me. I need, to, <clears throat> I need to make sure that I know that I know that I know I'm saved. And I believe God sent you here just for me to get some things settled for time and eternity. I need you to pray for me. Just pray for me that I'll do business with the Lord while he's speaking. Nobody looking around. Just If that's you, just say, pray for me, Brother Downs. I don't know that I'm ready. Anybody like that? Okay. Anybody else? Anybody else? Could be some more in here. 
And I'm going to ask you right where you're sitting. You say, I, <clears throat> I know for a fact, I'm just, <clears throat> God's been dealing with me about this. Well, I'm going to ask you right where you're sitting. Those that raise their hands, others, you're not sure right now. I want you to do business with the Lord and nail it down once and for all. Just say this to the Lord right now. Just say, Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you for your death on the cross and the blood you shed for me. Thank you that you rose again for me to live inside. And so, Lord, come into my life. Cleanse me. Forgive me. And save me. Change me. I give you my life, Lord Jesus. Come into my heart now in Christ's name. Amen. Nobody looking around. Say, Brother Downs, I prayed that prayer. I did business with the Lord.